L'Oreal reporting a much better than expected quarter when it comes to e-commerce, digital sales in China. Uh, you stopped short, though, of giving specific guidance for 2021, though saying you expect uh, growth uh, to continue into this year. Uh, but that not giving those specific numbers suggests there may be a sense of uncertainty. Where does this lie? Are there areas that you are more sure about and areas that you are less sure about? The situation is, as you know very well, very pretty uncertain. But uh, but we are po we are positive and we are optimistic. We and confident. We we think that uh, the market, the beauty market, is uh, is bouncing back. Uh, we think uh, after ye a year where it was at minus eight percent, we think it's going to be in positive territory this year. And we always uh, have as a, as a an ambition and a commitment to uh, overperform the market. So it means that we are confident on our capacity to grow our sales this year and also to, uh, to improve uh, again uh, our profitability as we have been doing uh, every year for many, many years. Are you concerned at all, though, about the direction of travel in Europe? You mentioned those restrictions caused by the pandemic. We're not really seeing those uh, lifting. Much of the continent still under movement restrictions, uh, people still having to wear masks, travel, air travel in particular, not likely to come back uh, this year, might even be next year. Does that concern you at all, particularly when you look at beauty and also then the luxury? business? Well, you know, it's true that the fact that uh, you cannot travel doesn't help. And, and uh, for example, our travel retail business uh, has been really down. But we have been also able to demonstrate, you know, in the quarter three and quarter four last year, that even with the travel retail really down, we are able to grow the rest of the business. You know, we, we did a, four, a plus 4.8 percent growth in Q4 in 2020 with a very difficult travel retail. So it means that uh, we, I'm sure that we will be able to grow our business even without the travel retail for the f for first few quarters. And when uh, travel will be back, it will just uh, be an addition uh, element of growth for, for the remaining of the year. You also mentioned China and the uh, spectacular performance, you called it, of China since it's come out of lockdown restrictions. Much of uh, the corporate world really pinning its hope, uh, hopes on China being uh, the engine of growth going forward. Are you confident that it, continue, that it can continue to be that engine of growth? And do you have any concerns at all uh, about geopolitical tensions? We're certainly seeing the Biden administration in the US perhaps continuing policies that are more hardline when it comes to China. Are you concerned at all about trade disputes re-emerging? No, we are, we are not worried at all. Uh, you know, first, uh, our, beauty, uh, our beauty business is relatively immune to uh, international relations. Uh, uh, China, the beauty market has been growing for many, many years. We know that uh, the, the rise of consumption in China is a priority for the Chinese government, and uh, and beauty is an important part of consumption because it uh, helps people in their daily life uh, uh, for the quality of life and for their uh, everyday happiness. So, I'm I'm very uh, confident about the rise of the beauty business, the beauty market in China for the next few years, and we have also demonstrated that uh, we are growing much faster than the market itself. You know, in 2020, the market in China was only plus four, which is already good because it was the only country in the world to have a growth, but we were able to do plus 27%. So, so our capacity to overgrow the market, to outgrow the market uh, is, uh, is immense. And uh, we still have a market share, which is pretty reasonable in China. So. Uh, we have a huge reservoir of growth for many, many years in China. L'Oreal wants e-commerce to become 50% of sales over time. What is the strategy for achieving that? What will that do uh, for uh, market share, for margin? Uh, further strategy is to do what we have been doing for 10 years, which is to be all, always ahead of the game uh, in, in e-commerce. Uh, you know, we were the first company in 2010 to really embrace e-commerce and digital as a priority and as an opportunity for the group. We always considered e-commerce as a priority for all our businesses worldwide. And the good thing is that definitely the, the pandemic has uh, accelerated the trend. You know, uh, I think we have gained uh, three or five years in terms of uh, acceleration of e-commerce for our business. 
and, and we are, I would say, much ahead of our competition in terms of e-commerce. And it's true that now it's 27%. And uh, we see uh, the day, we don't know exactly when, but uh, when it could be 50% uh, of, our, of our business. So we are maximizing it everywhere because e-commerce is an alternative option for, for, for consumers on everything, for all divisions, for all regions, for all countries. Uh, so we are just maximizing this, uh, this opportunity everywhere we can. And, uh, and it has, as you said, rightly, it has some uh, very good uh, impact. First, it uh, democratizes beauty. Uh, it helps consumers all over the world to have access to beauty in an easier way. And it's also uh, good for margin. So it's, uh, it's a win-win. <laughs> Uh, certainly a win-win if it's good for margin, I can imagine that. Uh, Monsieur Agon, you are stepping back as CEO uh, later this spring. You've given your final analyst uh, presentation for the company. Uh, what do you think was your uh, proudest achievement over the last uh, 10 to 15 years? And where do you think your successor uh, can really make his mark? Uh, you know, I have several reasons for pride. Uh, number one, of course, the, the, the company has been very successful these past 15 years. We multiplied by more than 3.5 times uh, the value of the company, the value of the share. We, uh, we increase our, uh, our market shares. Uh, we, were, we strengthen our, our leadership. But I would say that the, what I'm the most proud of is not that, which is already good, but it's not that. It's more the fact that we, uh, you know, uh, I wanted to make L'Oréal also exemplary in terms of uh, extra financial performance. And I wanted L'Oréal to be exemplary in terms of sustainability, in terms of gender equality, in terms of ethics, in terms of uh, social welfare. And, and we have been recognized uh, recently by all, uh, all the um, all standards uh, as one of the best companies on all these fronts. By, by Bloomberg, by the way, <laughs> uh, in terms of gender equality, by uh, the CDP. Uh, we are the only company in the world to have been recognized with a AAA five years in a row, uh, by uh, ethical quote, uh, by covalence on ethics. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. I think that Loyal today is a super performing company, but not only in business, not only in, uh, in sales and profit and share value, but also in terms of uh, extra financial performance in terms of ESG, as we say today. And uh, I think it's, uh, I'm happy to pass that to my successor.